Hi everybody. Today I want to talk to you about something that you can do through 4-H that is really important. Uh, it's something that you will actually use throughout your life and that is learning how to do judging and how to give oral reasons. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, I don't really plan to be on the livestock judging team or the dairy judging team or the horse judging team. And that's fine because there are lots of other places that you can learn how to do judging. You might be judging a class of foods or cake decorating or sewing or even something as simple as pencils. But the really important thing that you need to know about judging, and I'm a huge advocate for judging programs because of this, is why you need to learn to judge and why you need to learn to give oral reasons. Judging helps you develop some really important skills. It helps you learn critical thinking and how to be logical. It helps you learn problem solving. If you're looking at a class and you're trying to decide how you want to place them, you might have to do a little problem solving and you're obviously going to be practicing your decision making. You're going to have to make that decision. When you get into giving oral reasons, you are defending that decision in front of someone else where you have the ability to practice your public speaking skills and really develop some self-confidence. So today we're going to focus on the oral reasons part of judging because you can really do this with almost any project area. And I encourage you to practice every opportunity you get. A lot of 4-H groups do judging in their clubs or their projects. You might be able to do it at your county level or even the state level. So there are lots of places that you can learn and practice your oral reasons and judging. So let's talk about what usually happens. Usually in a class, you're gonna have four objects. So our class, let's say we decided we were going to place it one, two, three, four. So out of this four items, let's say it's these four pencils, you're actually going to have three pair. How does that work? You have one over two, two over three, and three over four. So this is your top pair, this is your middle, and this is your bottom pair. So I hope that makes sense to you that there are three pair. Now what's gonna happen is you're gonna have to put down some notes about why you place these the way that you did. And I wanna talk a little bit about that. When you are defending why you placed one over two, you want to compare those two. You do not want to describe one, you wanna compare it to two. As an example, let's look at these two pencils. Obviously they are very different. So if I were just describing this pencil, I would say it's white, it hasn't been sharpened yet, it has an eraser, and it has some writing on it. But that doesn't really tell me why I would place it with this one. This is a mechanical pencil. It also has an eraser. It also has lead to write with. And it's uh, black and clear, okay? Again, just describing the pencil. But if I want to compare these two pencils, the white pencil is longer than the black pencil. The black pencil is actually ready to be used. So you might say something like, uh, has more sharp lead. You might also 
talk about the erasers. The black pencil's eraser has been used more, so the white pencil has more eraser. So when you're comparing these two utensils, this one's darker, it's shorter, this one's longer. So the point I'm making is use ER words, or if you're saying something that doesn't use an ER word, use more, um, more color, more eraser, longer, sharper. So for example, I am a big proponent of dairy judging. And if I were talking about two animals, I might say one was longer and taller, sharper and cleaner, had more style and more balance. All of those compare to the animal that I'm placing her above. Now, that's not all you're gonna say in your pair. There are going to be things that you like about the second place object better than you liked about the first place object. That's what we call a grant. A grant is where you like something about the lower object in the pair better than you do about the one that's on the top part of the pair. So for example, if we had these two pencils that are quite similar, this white might be what we consider a close pair. But as you can see, one of them is broken and the other one is sharpened. So that might be how you place this pair. You might say something like, while these two are very similar, I prefer the pink pencil over the teal pencil. The pink pencil has a more sharpened lead. But you might also go on to say, however, I do like that the teal pencil has teal lead and that would make a more colorful writing. So you're gonna do that for all three pairs. And then when you get into that reasons room and you're talking to the official judge, you might think that you need to either read your notes or memorize your notes. And I'm going to encourage you not to do either one of those. As you practice, you want to practice what we call visualizing. So you wanna to try to remember what these four pencils looked like and how you placed them. And then you're going to share your reasons that you made the choices that you made in the class. So you're going to introduce it by saying, I placed this class of pencils, one, two, three, four. Now, when you're doing a judging project like this, where you're not actually judging livestock or horses, you might be given a problem. So you're not just judging these four pencils, but you're judging these four pencils in how suitable they are for an art project or um, how suitable they are for writing your term paper. You might not want to write in teal pencil for your term paper, but you might really like it for your art project. So that really matters when you're judging that kind of thing. You need to read through the problem and then place them accordingly. So you're going to introduce your class. I place this class of pencils, one, two, three, four. If you want to make a general statement about the class at that point, you can. And then you will just move on to say, in my top pair, I placed one over two. Then you're going to give three or four reasons that you placed one over two. And remember to compare. Then you're going to give that grant why you liked two better than one. And then you're going to move on to your middle pair. In my middle pair, I place two over three. Now, as you get more practice, you can put in transitions. You can um, learn more terminology. As you learn more about the project area that you're doing and judging, you may develop more confidence when you're giving your reasons. And you may want to say a few more things, and that's perfectly fine. But when you're starting out, you can keep it very simple 
very basic, just to fend those placings. You're gonna do your middle pair, same way you did your top pair. And then when you move to your bottom pair, you're going to give your reason for your top. You're going to give your grant for what you liked about the bottom better than the third place. And then you're gonna give a conclusion. And you're going to say um, something like, although I did like that four had teal lead, it lacked the sharpness and the eraser to place any higher in this class today. For these reasons, I place this class of pencils one, two, three, four. Thank you. Are there any questions? And that's it. That's all there is to giving a set of reasons. But what you will do as you practice this over and over is you will not only develop confidence, you will develop your speaking skills, you will learn about the project that you're talking about and learning to judge, you will practice your critical thinking, your problem solving, developing logic, your decision making, and your defense of that decision. And those are things that you will use throughout your life. So I encourage you to get in touch with your 4-H leader, your 4-H staff person, or a judging program near you.